And now, forecast first from Color 10 News, certified by WeatherAid for the most accurate forecast in the Ozarks. Well, today was the November beauty on this election day. We had sunny skies and very warm temperatures. Right now, we're looking at clear conditions with readings right now falling out of the 70s back into the 60s. We did manage to get into the mid 70s here in Springfield, but there were a lot of spots that actually got in the mid to upper 70s this afternoon. Our overnight forecast uh, looks a lot like last night, a little bit warmer, uh, starry skies, a few high clouds coming in by morning, temperatures dropping through the 50s into the middle and upper 40s for lows tonight. And we'll be back in the 70s tomorrow. In fact, it still looks like a long stretch of unusually warm weather through this upcoming weekend before some colder weather arrives early next week. More on that in your forecast coming up. Color 10 News at 5 starts now. Campaigns have come to a close. It is election day and voters showed up in record numbers to decide who will lead America and Missouri. Color 10 has team coverage as ballots are counted and futures decided. This night will be long and we hope you'll watch it all from your local election headquarters, Color 10. And welcome to your election headquarters. Polls are open for about two more hours in Missouri. Good evening, I'm Heather Lewis. Good to have you along here at 5 as we begin tonight. I'm David Oliver. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready too. Are you ready? That's the big question because we have a long night ahead, a lot to look at tonight, a lot to keep up with as well. We're going to get caught up right now on what's happening around our nation as we come on the air on this election day. Republicans are keeping legal options open now in the battleground state of Penn. Pennsylvania. The issue there is whether absentee votes that arrive after the polls close should be counted. Now, if this state proves to be critical for the president's reelection, this will be a state to watch. Election officials in a handful of states are warning voters to disregard robocalls, urging them to stay home rather than go to the polls. These calls have hit states that lean both Republican and Democrat. The FBI is investigating. Also, a nationwide survey of voters by the Associated Press shows tonight the COVID-19 pandemic is the top issue in this presidential race. The economy came in in that survey a close second place. Of course, Color 10 is your local election headquarters. We're going to be bringing you live coverage all evening on the air here and online. Bailey Stroll is live at JQH Arena first up tonight over at Missouri State Court. That's one of those uh, central polling locations this year. And Bailey, how's the line to vote looking there? Hey, Devin and David and Heather, the lines are officially inside. No lines outside of JQH Arena right now. But if you look, you can see that the lines are still pretty long. It's still going to take a little bit to get from the end of the line up to cast your vote and get going. Those leaving tonight telling me it's taking them about 30, 40, maybe even 50 minutes when the line was a little longer to actually get in and cast their ballot. Now, earlier I spoke with Green County Clerk Shane Scholler, who said they had some minor issues this morning when setting up the scanning machines. But that's normal after transporting them from one location to the polls. And as the night goes on, Scholler says we'll have some of the first results in Greene County around 730. But remember, that will only be from absentee and mail in ballots. Scholler says election workers began tallying those ballots around 930 this morning, starting with about 18,000 absentee ballots that were cast in person before Election Day. Now we'll be catching up with Green County Clerk Shane Scholler in just a little bit, and we'll have another update coming up on Color 10 News in about 30 minutes. Reporting at JQH Arena, Bailey Stroll, Ozarks First. Polls in Missouri stay open until 7 p.m. tonight. If you are in line at 7, you will be allowed to vote. Polls in Arkansas are open until 730. As soon as results start coming in, we'll run them at the bottom of your screen, and they'll also be posted on OzarksFirst.com. Not sure how you uh, felt about things where you voted today, but a lot of voters did stand in long lines across the Ozarks. We can show that to you. In fact, we know that spirits seem to be pretty high, even as people were out there waiting in those long lines. Let me show you this right here. Voters winding around Ozark South Elementary School uh, down in Christian County. Now, some people say they've been standing in line there at least three hours before they got inside to cast their vote. Christian County Clerk Kay Brown says a glitch in the electronic poll pads caused a bit of a problem today. And she said while they were trying to get the polls up and running, voters signed their name on a notebook instead of on the iPads. She told us the glitch was fixed in about an hour. Marcia Joy, a Christian County voter, shared her experience with us. He's been nice and friendly and calm and just standing in line waiting. 
And here's a look now at the lines at uh, James River Church in Ozark. Earlier, voters there lined up around the church there and the parking lot, just lots of people. We know that Ozark police tell us uh, they were called to a disturbance there with a man with a megaphone urging people to vote for a certain candidate, though. But by the time police got there, that man was gone. The church had asked him to leave the property, and he did. Voters throughout Branson made their way to the polls today as well, and many of these polling sites were packed well through lunchtime. Color 10's Jacob Blunt is joining us live from Branson with updates on how voting went for Taney and Stone Counties. Good evening. Good evening, Heather. We did see those long lines for voters throughout the day at different polling locations in both Branson and Reed Spring. Now, even though the wait times for voters was pretty low, we did meet some who brought their own seating as they waited to cast their ballots. Important to vote today. One of the, probably one of the biggest voting things in history. And I'm here. We're here. Everybody's here. This is Gloria Zwicky and her family. She says this is the third time trying to wait out the long lines to vote today. We came here at 8 o'clock and the line was all the way to the stadium there and I said I can't do that. So we went shopping, thought the line would get smaller, came back and it was further. And he said, Mom, we're going to go get chairs. So we did. Voters who waited out the long line at Reed Spring High School say they were done in less than an hour. Lines were also out the door and around the building at the First Presbyterian Church in Branson. First-time voter Ava Salvi says the election is crucial to her and her peers. This um, election year is more important for the young because there's like a lot of people my age like going out to vote. She says it took her family about 30 minutes to get through the line and vote today. Pretty fast for how long the line was. Many voters, like Nicole Flannery, told us that the lines were so long today because of COVID-19 safety precautions. She adds that she felt safe voting today in Taney County. Even inside, everybody was practicing social distancing, everybody had their mask, and everybody was being cautious of everyone around them. And no matter who you ask, from either side of the aisle, people knew the importance of voting today. Our country is very torn right now, and it's, it's very upsetting. And um, hopefully after this, we can figure things out and come back together and not be so apart on everything. Now, many of the voters we spoke with today believe this is the highest voter turnout that they have seen in either Taney or Stone County. But we'll have those numbers for you when the polls finally close in the next two hours, a little bit later on Color 10 News. Reporting live from Branson, this is Jacob Blunt, Ozarks First. Jacob, thanks. Besides the presidential race, there are many other topics Missouri voters are deciding on today. Yeah, in fact, uh, before today, almost a fifth of all Missouri voters had already voted early. And Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft has told our Color 10 News team that uh, turnout has been high certainly all day long. A lot of lines uh, around the state. We've shown you some of those lines locally, too. And uh, it's obviously a site that's uh, not, we don't normally see that in these elections. Yeah, that's you for know, sure. there have actually been very few problems. Um, as well that we mm -hmm. have heard about and they have been resolved quickly if that is the case. The polls open for a little less than two hours. One of the questions on the ballot is Amendment 1 uh, restricted restricted some state elected officials to term limits and lawmakers both for and against the Amendment 1. Uh, we're talking to our Missouri Capitol Bureau reporter. Here's what they had to say. Currently in Missouri, the state attorney general, the secretary of state, the state auditor, and the lieutenant governor are exempted from the eight-year term limits that apply to the legislature and the governor. And this Amendment 1, if it passed, would apply term limits consistently across the board to all the other statewide officials that are currently exempted. Offices that this would be expanded to are of a different nature. They're offices that are more aligned with expertise and, and experience. Uh, there are offices that serve the public's interest with information, with knowledge. Um, and so I don't see them the same way as I see those offices that have power. So if you want to compare past elections, folks, Missouri sent out almost 80 percent more absentee ballots this year compared to what the state sent out for the election back in 2016. We're going to be monitoring things in our state's capital throughout the evening hours. We'll bring you any updates as we get them from Jefferson City right here on Color 10 News and also on OzarksFirst.com. And tonight we're going to bring you team coverage of this historic election. Our local coverage begins at 9 o'clock over on Ozarks Fox, KRBK. 
Then join Heather and me back here on Color 10 News at 10. We're going to bring you more live reports, up to the minute results. And if you aren't by your TV tonight, we're going to be streaming on OzarksFirst.com beginning at 7 o'clock. You can watch that on your smartphone. And also, we will send you breaking news alerts to your Color 10 News app if you'll download that as well on your smartphone. Making news now exactly two years after Missourians approved medical marijuana, Springfield's first dispensary is now open to card holders. Jesse Inman has been following Missouri's journey to legal medical marijuana since before that amendment passed. Jesse, how do things look out there today on day one? You know, usually the story on election day is long lines at polling places, but Old Route 66 dispensary had a pretty long line of their own the last couple of days. It was a smooth operation today, though, as they had a soft launch for their pre-registered V. VIP members yesterday, but today open to the public for the very first time. Owner John Lopez there says the biggest thing they took from yesterday open earlier. They opened an hour earlier than scheduled today because a line had already started forming almost backed up to Glenstone. The drive through was getting people in and out quickly today and the staff there couldn't be any happier to finally see this come to fruition. It's been a journey from the beginning. Our team, we, we put it all on the line. Uh, we bought this building before we even got the license and uh, we risked a lot, but uh, it's, it's uh, gonna be worth it. We know uh, patients personally that, that have to have this, uh, including ourselves, and we're just super excited to get going. Now, right now, they are only selling marijuana in the flower form, and Lopez anticipates things like edibles, vapes, and other manufactured products will hopefully be in their facility by the end of the year. David? All right, Jesse Inman here at 5. Thanks. Of course, a big race we're watching here in the state of Missouri, the race to be governor in our state between incumbent Mike Parson and his challenger, the Democratic uh, State Auditor, Nicole Galloway. We're going to be following that race as well tonight. That's right. We'll talk about their key issues and where they'll be watching the Results roll in right after this break. You're watching Color 10 News, Ozarks First with David Oliver, Heather Lewis, weather with Chief Meteorologist Jamie Warner. This is Color 10 News at 5.
Welcome back, Color 10, your local election headquarters all night long tonight. One of the biggest races that we're watching on the state level, of course, the race for governor here in Missouri. We have coverage from both the Republican and the Democratic campaign watch parties for you tonight. Yes, Governor Parson is in Springfield tonight waiting on results at the White River Conference Center. Governor Parson waiting to see if he'll be elected to this position for the very first time because you'll recall he won the lieutenant governor's seat back in 2016 but took the office of governor two years later when former Governor Eric Greitens resigned. We're also going to bring you coverage from Columbia tonight. That's where state auditor and candidate for Missouri Governor Nicole Galloway is going to be watching the results uh, arrive in tonight. If Galloway is elected, she would be Missouri's first female governor. Color 10's David Chasanoff will have much more on the GOP watch party that's happening here locally coming up later in our hour of news on Color 10. We want to give you a follow-up here. Also other news happening today. We know more tonight about how the Drug Enforcement Agency was involved in a deadly shooting in Springfield yesterday afternoon. Caleb Slay was shot and killed. This happened yesterday afternoon just before 3.30 on Maryland Street uh, over near Sunshine, over kind of near Mercy Hospital. In a statement given to Color 10 from the St. Louis DEA office, officials say just before the shooting, agents approached a person they thought was involved in a violation of federal law. The statement goes on to say during the conversation between the agents and that individual, a second individual later identified as Caleb Slay approached the agents. Soon thereafter, a physical altercation ensued between the agents and Slay, which resulted in Slay being shot. Slay was pronounced dead at the scene. A firearm was recovered at the scene. Both DEA agents were sent to the hospital as a precaution, but they have since been released. Three people in Nixa could be facing charges for stealing dozens of political signs overnight. Someone called Nixa police just after midnight. That person saw people in a white SUV stealing political signs from the area of Glacier Court and Parkmore Heights. That's just west of Massey Boulevard. Police found the SUV later and also found 36 political signs. Police have submitted stealing charges to the prosecutor. Officers have returned some of those signs to the owners, but many of them are still at the police department. Call Nixa Police if you are missing your sign. Well, a sunny election day is coming to a close. Jamie Warner is up next to show us when we'll see rain chances again. And now weather with Chief Meteorologist Jamie Warner, certified by WeatherAid for the most accurate forecast in the Ozarks. 
Well, just a gorgeous election day across the area. Whether you're looking at the sky, feeling the temperatures, or looking at the fall foliage, and that's our scene right now as we look across uh, Springfield. There's the water tower there on Glenstone, and you can see that patchwork of colors there across town. Looks like we're a little past our peak, especially if you look at the ridge lines. You can see that a lot of the trees have given up their leaves. Temperatures in the upper 60s still, with winds out of the south southwest at eight miles per hour. And like yesterday, there's really not a lot of weather going on in the nation. This has been a very quiet day for Election Day. Weather-wise, a little bit of rain here in Washington and Oregon, a little bit of intermountain rain and snow there in parts of Utah, south across some Arizona and New Mexico, and still a little bit of precipitation in the Northeast. But the vast majority of the country is looking at quiet weather, and we're finding that here locally as well. A little bit of high cloudiness uh, starting to sneak into our skies right now. I think we're going to hold off on most of it, though, until closer to sunrise on Wednesday. And it looks like we'll see that high cloudiness come in waves on Wednesday. So for the morning hours, expecting mostly sunny skies. But as we get into the afternoon hours, I do expect the high cloudiness to be a bit thicker, giving us partly sunny or filtered sunshine. Winds will be breezy, too, a little stronger than today. And temperatures probably won't be quite as warm as they were this afternoon because of that filtered sunshine. By Thursday, the high cloudiness is on the way out. And it looks like we're back to generally sunny conditions across the area and a warm day expected across the area too. So talking temperatures, here's what we're looking at overnight tonight. Looks like uh, our coldest readings are going to be here across south central Missouri and then north across uh, Shannon and Dent County where we'll find temperatures dipping maybe as low as upper 30s to low 40s. Uh, most of the rest of us so are looking at lows tonight in the mid to upper 40s with some low 50s possible, especially back toward I-49. Wednesday's forecast, again, looks really nice. Not quite as bright as it was today, but temperatures will be warm, and it'll be a great day to get outside. Uh, looks like we'll find readings up near 70 by lunchtime, and I expect highs tomorrow here in Springfield topping out probably close to the mid 70s once again and that goes really for just about everybody winds out the southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour tomorrow night another chilly night with most locations dipping into the mid to upper 30s and then we're back in the mid 70s for highs again on thursday as we keep this warm weather train going uh, throughout the rest of the week and and that will continue through the upcoming weekend now by the end of the week we'll see a trough starting to develop in the western u.s It'll dig into the west, and then eventually we're going to find a, a cold front getting nudged east across the area. It looks like that's going to happen sometime Monday night through Tuesday. The timing of that front still questionable. The way that front comes through also still questionable. Uh, I can't rule out the possibility of thunderstorms or maybe even some stronger thunderstorms, but right now it looks like instability is going to be lacking, and I think we're just going to be dealing with showers and colder weather arriving as that cold front moves through. There's your 7-day forecast. Very, very warm. Uh, in fact, it looks like we could record uh, challenge record highs on Monday of next week in parts of the area. It looks like highs in the upper 70s, possibly 80 degrees, and then showers uh, expected to roll through on Tuesday with colder weather. You know, sure doesn't feel like November, but mm -hmm. what a treat for all the voters who were standing in line outside, some for an hour, yeah. to have that sunshine. I mean, down. We, we mentioned that too. I mean, Heather, you you were pretty lucky where you vote. Mm -hmm. I, Jamie, you, you were lucky too. I was outside for a while, I didn't mind it mm -hmm. one bit. It's a great process, everybody completely respectful, peaceful, mm -hmm. but I thought about it because the sun was pretty warm and yeah. I was wearing some shorts because I was going to go for a walk afterward yeah. and I, you could feel the warmth of the sun. It was like, oh, this is this is pretty warm out yeah. here. And just think yeah. back a week ago, yeah. it was wet with temperatures Freezing. in the 30s. <laughs> yeah. It's quite a change. Yeah, it has been, that's for sure. We're leaving one line to join another. After the break here on our News at 5, why hundreds are gathering to leave their voting sticker on this famous ground.
Fullerton is your local election headquarters. People across the nation are waiting in lines to vote. It's been something to see out there, that mm -hmm. is for sure. In Rochester, New York, people are leaving one line to wait in another, visiting Susan B. Anthony's graveside to place their I Voted stickers on the headstone. Anthony was a women's rights activist who was instrumental in fighting for women's right to vote. Placing the voting stickers at the site has become a Rochester tradition, extra special with this year marking the 200th birthday of the renowned suffragist, as well as the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment. Big year. Back here at home, the Hy-Vee store in Springfield is now offering free drive-through COVID-19 testing. Here are the details. The tests are available Thursday between 7 and 10 in the morning. Then again, Saturday between 8 and 10 a.m. You don't have to have symptoms to get one of these free tests. You do have to register, though. Again, this is happening at Hy-V here in Springfield on Battlefield Road. You'll find a link to register inside this story on OzarksFirst.com. Also making news tonight, students at Missouri State University will get the chance to be a part of a project with the Environmental Protection Agency. A $45,000 grant will fund a project between MSU, Missouri University of Science and Technology, and the EPA. Students will gain training in pollution prevention. All right, coming up here on our special hour-long broadcast at 5, we're going to have another live look for you at some of the polling lines here in Greene County. And and also a check in with our reporters at the Republican and Democrat watch parties. Keep it here. And now, forecast first from Color 10 News, certified by Weather Rate for the most accurate forecast in the Ozarks. It's been sunny, it's been warm, it's been beautiful on this election day. And right now, we're looking at clear skies. Temperatures currently in the 60s here in Springfield, but still holding on to some low 70s out there. 67 in Springfield, that is almost 10 degrees warmer than 24 hours ago. Yes, we've seen a big warm up, and we're going to hold on to this warm up 
For the rest of the week and this upcoming weekend, I'll have more forecast details coming up. Color 10 News starts now. We are still bringing you team coverage from your local election headquarters. Thanks for staying with us for this special hour-long 5 o'clock broadcast tonight. I'm David Oliver. And I'm Heather Lewis. We're glad you're with us tonight. We want to introduce you to our live crews who will be covering this election for us. Bailey Stroll is live at a polling place in Springfield. Francis Lynn is live at Mother's Brewing, where local Democrats will be gathered. David Chasanoff is at the White River Conference Center over at Bass Pro, where Missouri Governor Mike Parson is going to be watching the results roll in there tonight. Want to check back in first, though, tonight with Bailey Stroll live at that central polling location over at JQH, where we've been talking about some of the lines we've been seeing across the Ozarks today. Bailey, how are things looking right now where you are? Well, here at the central polling location, JQH Arena, the lines are actually starting to die down with about an hour and a half left to cast a ballot here. Now, I just spoke with Greene County Clerk Shane Choller, who tells me between early voting, absentee and mail-in voting, and then who, who has cast a ballot here in Greene County today, voter turnout is at about 68%. Now we've heard about some some long lines earlier this morning about an hour long lines at polling locations both in green and christian county there were some issues with some scanners in both counties as well but that was cleared up relatively quickly now i want to take a look at the lines right now at jqh arena shoulder says he expects these first results to be released tonight around 7 15 or 7 30 but that will only be from absentee and mail-in ballots none from any Greene County polling locations from today. He says election workers are still tallying mail-in or absentee ballots that were cast before Election Day. About 18,000 of those alone were cast in person absentee at the Election Center. And if you'll remember, processing those ballots began five days ago at the University Plaza Convention Center. But today, that was transformed into a polling location for those who have tested positive for COVID-19 as well as those who are under quarantine. The goal of the University Plaza was anyone who is in quarantine or tested positive that they have a place that they can go vote because there were hundreds in that situation. We would not be able to get enough people to them in order to be able to vote them from home and so it was an option for them as long as they were in one of those two categories, positive or in quarantine, we asked them to come vote there and we've had several hundred who have done that today. Now, just a reminder, if you are in line when the polls close at 7 o'clock, you can still vote. But after the polls close, the memory sticks inside these voting machines will be taken to the election center again on Boonville and Springfield to be tallied. We'll likely start seeing those results coming back a little later. Shoulder says we could have some unofficial results here in Greene County by 1030 tonight. Reporting at JQH Arena, Bailey Stroll, Ozarks First. All right, Bailey, thanks. Democrats vying for office here in southwest Missouri today on the ticket out there. Gonna, they're going to be gathering at a Mother's Brewing here in Springfield to watch the results come in tonight. Our Francis Lynn is there tonight to uh, kind of cover the watch party and let us know what's happening there. Probably not a lot happening right now. Good evening, David. So this is where the local Democratic campaigns will be holding their watch parties together. I'm over here at Mother's Brewing, and a few local candidates are expected to show up here later. Missouri House of Representatives candidate Crystal Quaid is running against Republican opponent Sarah Semple for District 132. And candidate Betsy Fogel is running against Republican opponent Steve Helms for District 135. Now, Quaid and Fogel are both expected to be here, along with a few other Democratic candidates around 7 to 8 p.m. Of course, I'll be here for the rest of the night and I'll be checking in with you, Dave and Heather, throughout the night. Francis Lynn, Ozarks First. All right, Francis, thank you. Governor Mike Parson is hosting an election night watch party right here in Springfield tonight. Our David Chasanov joins us now from the Bass Pro White River Conference Center. David, are things getting set up there? Well, guys, we have yet to start things up here right now, but I have been seeing some people walking around setting up tables and everyone is wearing masks. Normally the capacity in here is 500 people, but because of COVID-19, that has been cut, cut in half to 250. Now, I did get a bit of a preview of what's going to happen here tonight from Mike Parsons, communications director, and he tells me that Congressman Jason Smith will be emceeing tonight's event and some other members from Parsons' campaign team will also be speaking as well. But as for Mike Parson. He plans to not speak at the podium right behind me until results are 100% in. Now, over the weekend, speaking of results, Mike Parson tweeted that he feels 
he feels optimistic that there's going to be a red sweep here in Missouri and across the country, feeling very good about his chances as this night goes forward. Reporting here in Springfield, David Chasnoff, Ozarks First. We also want to share with you a great tool available on our Color 10 News app for your smartphone. This interactive map will be updated with the Electoral College numbers from the Associated Press tonight, and you can track the balance of power as the votes roll in. You can also select Missouri, check out the votes happening here. You'll find this again by going to election results on our phone app. It's also available on OzarksFirst.com. Also happening now in our news after a soft launch for VIP members yesterday, Old Route 66 Wellness opened its doors to the public today. Medical marijuana passed on election night in 2018, and Springfield's first dispensary is now up and running. Things were actually going pretty smoothly today as their drive through and walk-ins were averaging just a few minute wait, according to owner John Lopez. He says the last two days have been a rewarding experience for them and their patients. You know, this is decades in the making. It's obviously the beginning. Prices are higher than what people want. It's higher than what we want as well, but with only a couple cultivators and no competition, it's going to take several months to, to get that lower. I thought it was awesome, and I think that it's going to help this economy, and a lot, of, a lot of trouble that we see on a daily basis is going to go away because, you know, people rather smoke on the couch than drink and drive, you know what I mean? Lopez anticipates that uh, they will open their Ozark location by the end of the year. Well, more than 100 million Americans have cast their ballots early as of this election year. And despite that, lines are still pretty long at polling places across the nation at this hour. So far, the process has been peaceful, but there have been a few isolated problems being reported at various polling locations. Dania Backus has the latest tonight from Los Angeles. Voters lined up before the sun came up this morning, ready to cast their ballot. Pretty important. That's why I woke up at 4 o'clock this morning and uh, got out here by 4.30. Some waited in line for hours. I'm prepared to wait as long as it takes. Polling locations are operating with special COVID-19 protocols in place. You can see the hand sanitizer out. They had a system for the pens and uh, they had, I mean, it was very, I mean, they had everything just worked out really well. Here in Los Angeles County, election officials say with the record number of early voting, they're able to begin preparing and sorting ballots. With just hours now until some polls close, some voting venues like in Florida, Georgia, Ohio, and Nevada are reporting some technical issues. These Oklahoma City voters cast their ballots in the dark because of a power outage after a recent storm. And some voters in Marion County, Indiana, were locked out of their polling place. Officials in several swing states, including Michigan, Pennsylvania, Florida, and Iowa, reported some voters received automated calls warning them to stay away from the polls today and vote tomorrow. Homeland Security officials say so far there is no evidence to suggest foreign adversaries have compromised any U.S. voting systems. We're not out of the woods yet, though. Today, in some sense, is halftime. Still, people are on edge. Several cities have boarded up in anticipation of violence following the election's outcome. There are at least 5,800 National Guard troops on duty in 13 states for election support and in case there is civil unrest. Donya back is CBS News, Los Angeles. Well, those standing in line today had no issues with the weather. After a few tastes of winter, we could be getting close to the 80s again. Stay tuned. Jamie has your seven day forecast next.
And now weather with Chief Meteorologist Jamie Warner. Certified by WeatherAid for the most accurate forecast in the Ozarks. Well, the last of the daylight starting to fade away. I uh, can still see a little bit out there. Uh, temperatures really aren't that bad. I mean, right now we're still in the 60s and temperatures tonight should stay well above freezing. Uh, here's a look at the highs today, uh, or at least the uh, latest high reports that we've gotten. Uh, I know Springfield, we did manage to hit 75 this afternoon. And when you take a look at the last 10 days, it's just incredibly uh, incredible where we were and how far we've gone in regard to our pattern. Last week, we were in the midst of that very cold and wet pattern. We had a high of only 38 on Tuesday of last week. Here we are a week later with a high afternoon high in the mid 70s and you couldn't ask for nicer weather. In fact, we're, we're at the beginning stages of really an unusually long stretch of warm, quiet weather for November. Uh, just kind of looking back over my records over the last 10 years since I've been here, uh, I can't find a November where we had such a long stretch of temperatures as high as we're going to be looking at in the month of November. Yeah, you get a few days in there and, and maybe you get a few days and it cools off and then you get another batch of warmer temperatures, but not this extended stretch of warm weather that we're going to find across the nation right now. It is quiet. That has not been the case down to our South and Central America where uh, we've had this extremely dangerous hurricane looming off the coastline here over the last 24 hours. That storm has now made its way ashore. It's moving inland. This is Hurricane Ada. Winds with the storm when it arrived or when it made landfall earlier today were at 140 miles per hour with a pressure of 940 millibars. I'm sure the storm has since, storm has since weakened now that it's pushed inland away from the coastline. This is one of the strongest hurricanes on record in the month of November and especially to make landfall. Very rare to have that happen. Uh, even in the Western Caribbean where you, you tend to find these kinds of big storms this late in the season, uh, that's where they tend to want to develop. Uh, this is the forecast for Ada. It looks like it'll continue across Nicaragua, Honduras, and then eventually make its way back into the Western Caribbean. And it looks like four to five days from now, it's going to be posing a threat to Cuba. And then eventually maybe the state of Florida. We could see uh, some tropical weather impacting Florida here as we work through this upcoming weekend. And then that storm tends to linger in that area until something can come along to scoop it out. And that may take a little while. Locally, our pattern is very quiet, and that is exactly the way it's going to stay. The only thing of note to talk about is an increase in high cloudiness. We'll notice that by sunrise tomorrow. And we're going to find, I think, mostly sunny to partly sunny conditions throughout the day on Wednesday. Filtered sunshine, if you will. Those high clouds on the way out by Thursday morning, and it looks like we're back to generally sunny weather on Thursday. Temperatures tonight cooling off generally into the 40s, and then we'll see highs tomorrow. I think back in the mid 70s in most areas, maybe not quite as warm in some places as it was today, just because of that high cloudiness. Tomorrow night we're back into the 40s, and then we're back into the mid 70s for highs once again uh, on Thursday, and we'll find more of that for Friday, for Saturday. I think Sunday we could be looking at mid to upper 70s, and I think on Monday we could be looking at upper 70s to near 80 degrees. Few spots could see their record highs challenged on that day. Cold front moving through on Tuesday will come with showers, and obviously that will also lead to colder temperatures as well. Guys, back to you. Color 10 is your local election headquarters, and we are covering voting all across the state right now. Color 10's Capitol Bureau reporter Emily Manley live in Jefferson City tonight, where things have been pretty smooth there today and across our state for that matter. Emily? Yeah, David and Heather, even though we've seen a lot of voters across the state and some of them have even waited in long lines today, Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft says things are going pretty well. I spoke with him earlier and he says that there have been a few problems, but they have been resolved quickly. This is a statement that he sent me. I want you all to read it with me just a little bit ago, and I'm going to be talking through him throughout the night. Voter turnout is high, and I've been pleased to see so many Missourians in line to cast their ballots today. So far, the day seems to be going very smoothly. Now, I have some numbers for you. Nearly a fifth of all Missourians have already voted this election, whether that's 
that be mail-in or absentee ballots. Now to compare this to a previous election, David and Heather, I want you to listen to this number because I am just shocked here when it comes to absentee ballots. So compared to the 2016 election, the state sent out 80 percent more ballots for this election compared to 2016. So that shows you how many people early voted here in the state of Missouri, or maybe they just didn't want to go to the polls because of COVID-19. So we're going to continue to monitoring voter turnout here and talking to Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft throughout the evening. And we're going to bring you the latest here on Color 10 News. Reporting live tonight from Missouri State Capitol Bureau in Jefferson City, I'm Emily Manley. All right, Emily, thank you for the update. And while many voters have been dealing with anxiety over this election, some shop owners in Kansas City are worried about violence. Stores on the plaza like Hellsburg Diamonds, Kinder Scott, and Lucky Brand Clothing aren't taking any chances, boarding up the windows, bracing for the worst. Some voters compared the precautions to preparing for a natural disaster. In a statement, Hellsburg Diamond said the safety of its associates and physical assets are of the highest priority and said these steps are being taken out of an abundance of caution in the event of civil unrest related to the election. Coming up in sports. Missing the big game. Even if you feel great and you're perfect and like he feels, uh, it doesn't matter. Hardy and Lucy has more on Trevor Lawrence missing a second straight game. Now sports with Dan Lucy. The NFL is battling an outbreak of COVID-19 infections, and in Denver, 
It's starting at the very top. Legendary quarterback and current director of football operations John Elway has tested positive for the coronavirus. Broncos CEO Joe Ellens also has tested positive. Both received their test results this morning after experiencing mild symptoms. Elway is 60 years old. Ellis is 61. Two current assistant coaches, guard Graham Glasgow, are currently in isolation following positive tests last week for Denver. Broncos are scheduled to play at the Atlanta Falcons on Sunday. Clemson quarterback Trevor Lawrence will travel with the Tigers to South Bend on Saturday, but he's not going to play for the top-ranked Clemson team. Lawrence, who yesterday found out that he's not a Heisman Trophy favorite anymore, is still sitting out after his positive COVID-19 result. The quarterback has been cleared of COVID, but he has not been cleared by the ACC, or the, the ACC mandated cardiovascular test. Clemson will play at number four Notre Dame on Saturday night. You can't do that all in a day. You can't do it all in a few hours. Even if you feel great and you're perfect and like he feels, uh, it doesn't matter. If he was going to do my job, he'd be right back to work. I'm not running routes and dodging six foot five, 300 pounders. All right, and going to the Missouri Valley, slowly but surely some Valley basketball teams are releasing non-conference games. We're still waiting on Missouri State to firm up its non-conference slate. Today, the Southern Illinois Salukis announced that they are playing in the Wade Houston Tip-Off Classic in Louisville. This is a COVID pandemic tournament that features nine teams playing 18 games between November 25th and December 4th. The teams are going to be in a bubble. They're going to play these games at the Yum Center in Louisville, stay at a hotel that's connected by a walk walkway to the arena and the hotel is going to install a practice court and a weight room for these nine teams. The teams will also be tested following ACC health protocols. This will be the biggest university run non-conference event of the upcoming basketball campaign. High school soccer playoffs continued this afternoon at the Cooper Family Soccerplex in Class 1 District 6. New Covenant looking for a seventh straight victory. This afternoon the Warriors facing College Heights in the playoff match. New Covenant also had back-to-back -back shutouts to end the regular season. Warriors strike 20 minutes into the match. Dake Winslow to Josiah Barstead with the head ball to make it 1-0 New Covenant. Warriors on the attack again. Spencer Chevalier from the wing. His shot, though, stopped by College Heights' Benjamin Thomas. Late first half, the Cougars on the attack. The attacker is pulled down. A penalty is called. Roland Sanderson takes the shot, and he scores. That ties the match up at one, but New Covenant would go on to win, advancing three to one. And a number of high school soccer teams have advanced to district championships in class two, Rogersville against Monette. That'll be on Thursday. Tomorrow in class three, it's Bolivar against Willard. Glendale against Catholic and Lebanon against Rolla in Class 4, Ozark and Kickapoo and Nixa and Republic. It's going to wrap it up for sports. The news will be right back.
want to remind you, you have about an hour left to vote here in Greene County. Keep in mind, as we had a caller come give us a call and say she was trying to vote in Willard. At her polling place, the lines were crazy long. She called the city and they said, well, hey, don't forget about those central polling locations. Those include the CU Transit Center, Mercy, Cox, and JQH Arena. And she went there and it was 15 minutes there. And so, yeah. we have our Bailey Stroll yeah. live out there, too, checking yeah. the lines. And she said things are moving pretty smoothly. Mm -hmm. We also want to remind you that CBS will have election coverage starting in just a few minutes until results start to come in and we will have more on local results and coverage on KRBK starting at 9 and again right here on Color 10 at 10 o'clock. A lot to come tonight. Stay with your local election headquarters from all of us here at Color 10. Stay tuned.